Hello students. Today let's discuss on the first unit of the subject business economics that is meaning, nature and scope of business economics. Business economics as a discipline is of recent origin and it has acquired tremendous significance over the years. We also call it as managerial economics. Business economics establishes a link between economic theory and business practice. It focuses on the application of economic theory to business problems. We have a few definitions on business economics. One of the definitions goes like this. Business economics is the integration of economic theory with business practice for the purpose of facilitating decision making and forward planning. This definition is given by Spencer and Sigelman. We have yet another simple definition. According to McNair and Merriam, business economics is the use of economic modes of thought to analyze business situation. These definitions make it very clear that business economics shows how to apply economic concepts and theories to business decision making and planning. Thus, it is clear that there exists a very close relationship between economics and business practice. The tools of analysis that we learn in business economics will apply both to, both to the present and future decisions of the business. Now let's look into the features of business economics. The nature of business economics essentially constitutes the features of business economics. The first one is decision making. Here decision making is concerned with identification of economic choices and allocation of scarce resources. The next feature is goal oriented. Business economics is essentially goal oriented. It focuses on how business managers should take decisions to realize the goals of the organization. And the third feature is that business economics is essentially micro in nature. It is a study of a particular unit namely a firm. So here in business economics, we mainly look into the various theories of the firm. Of course, we also take into account macro concepts to analyze business situations. But business economics is more micro in character rather than being a macro one. And the next feature is that business economics is pragmatic. When I use the word pragmatic, it means that the study of business economics is more practical, mainly because business economics makes use of microeconomic concepts and tries to, provide, tries to provide solution to the problems faced by a firm. And another feature of business economics is that it is conceptual and scientific. Which means that business economics provides conceptual tools to solve business problems in a more scientific way. The next aspect of study in business economics 
is the scope of business economics. The scope of business economics can be conveniently examined under the following heads, namely demand analysis, production and cost analysis, pricing decisions, policies and practices, profit management, capital management and decision making. The first one, demand analysis. The foremost task of a firm is to assess the demand for its product. A study of demand analysis includes demand determinants, elasticity of demand, demand distinctions, and demand forecasting. Now, what is this demand forecasting? Demand forecasting means predicting the demand for the future. It is not sufficient if a business unit determines the demand for its product just for the current period. It is very necessary that it has to make a prediction about the future demand because the success of a business lies in continuity. No business wanted to be closed or shut down for want of sales. So it's very essential that you need to predict the demand for the future. Accurate demand forecasting will help the firm plan its business efficiently and effectively. And the next aspect under the scope of business economics is production and cost analysis. A study of production and cost analysis is important for the firm to attain efficient allocation of resources, to have effective project planning, and to evolve suitable policies in cost control. When we say attain efficient allocation of resources, we all know that producers are faced with the problem of limited resources. So when the resources are limited, we need to make an efficient allocation of resources so that wastages can be minimized, returns could be maximized. And it's also necessary to go in for effective project planning. Now what is project planning? The investment that you are going to take up which we call it as a project, requires planning. We need to look into both the cost of investment as well as the returns coming out of it. Every, pro, I mean, every firm wants to minimize the cost and maximize the returns. So for that to happen, you need to have an effective project plan. And a firm also looks into the various policies that can go under cost control and cost reductions. What are the measures of cost control and what are the cost reduction measures? So, production and cost analysis includes the study of production function, laws of returns, factors of production, economies and diseconomies to scale, the various cost concepts and the cost output relationship under various market forms and the various cost control measures and the cost reduction measures. Now when we say economies and diseconomies to scale, it means what are the advantages and disadvantages of producing goods on a large scale. Remember, 
production can happen in the short run as well as the long run. It doesn't mean that business closes in the short run. What we mean here is that planning can be done both on a short term basis as well as long term basis. So if you are going to plan on a long term, you have to consider the various advantages and disadvantages of large scale production. And the next aspect of study under the scope of economics is pricing decisions, policies and practices. All business decisions are centered around pricing decisions of a firm. The very survival and growth of a firm depend upon its pricing policy. Thus, an appropriate pricing strategy is necessary. And we need to remember that pricing strategies have to be adopted under different conditions. And the next one is profit management. Sorry, students. I missed using the slide here. What is profit management? We all know that profit measures the success of any business. Of course, this is a very traditional objective. But no firm is ready to compromise with profit. Today we have several other objectives along with the objective of profit, such as growth, sales maximization, goodwill of the customers and so on. But remember, profit is one of the important objective and no businessman or a producer or a firm is ready to compromise with this objective, namely profit. In simple, it says that no unit wants to incur a loss. Thus, profit planning becomes an important role. It plays an important role in influencing business decisions. No doubt profits are uncertain. In spite of that, every business needs to go for profit planning. And the topics included under profit planning are profit management and profit measurement. And the next area in the scope of business economics is capital management. Capital management refers to efficient and productive use of scarce capital. Capital management involves capital budgeting. Then when we use the word budgeting, remember, budgeting it becomes necessary whenever we make an investment. Because when we make an investment, there is a cost involved in the invest investment. <clears throat> remember students, investment happens only with capital. When I say capital, investment always happens with borrowed funds and that is the capital. And that capital involves cost. Capital is not available to the business freely. So you need to make a budgeting. What is the cost of capital and what is the rate of return coming out of that capital? It is only when the rate of return is greater than the cost of capital, the investment becomes a viable investment. And accordingly, you will need to make selection of appropriate project from <clears throat> among the different alternatives that a firm faces. And the next area of study under the scope of business economics is decision making. Decision making arises because of the problem of limited resources. 
but competing ends. The objective of decision making here is to put the available resources to the best possible use and in the process avoid the wastage of resources and thereby maximize the returns. So these are the areas that we study under the scope of business economics. In the next class, let's discuss on the various economic laws and principles. That's all for now, students. Thank you.